Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our one-shot game. Uh, that is the Treasure of Kraken Isle. So uh, this game, we're going to be just jumping right back in where we left off from last time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and dive into a short recap. Uh, but first off, uh, I'll go ahead and ask everyone how they're doing. I'll, I guess I'll go ahead and start with Trippy. How are you doing, uh, Trippy? I'm doing really good. It's a nice, beautiful, sunny day outside, and I'm here inside playing Dungeons & Dragons on computer like a nerd. And that's how we do it here. <laughs> Billy? Uh, just chilling. Uh, Kapla. Kapla. <laughs> that's a great way to start. Uh, let's see. King Bob, how's everything going in your corner of the world? Looks pretty nice outside, too. Got the door open. Um, yeah, I'm fine. I'm here. Getting some of that nice, fresh air in from outside, especially whenever you're kind of feeling a little under the weather. It helps. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, Nikolai, how is everything going over there? All is well. It's. It's dark already, no rain, pretty clear sky. Yeah, perfect time to play some online D&D. I would have to concur myself. It's a nice and clear day here as well. Uh, Maji, last but certainly not least. Hello, hello. I'm doing all right. I'm actually right. wide awake considering. <laughs> Yeah, the explosions might do that. <laughs> Just a little. All right. So uh, we'll go ahead and continue off from where we left off. So uh, last time, our heroes started off by uh, pursuing a uh, horde of treasure that's been rumored to be within a remote island called the Kraken Isle. So uh, the person who hired them for the job, going by the name of Rickert Flambe, uh, actually gave them a treasure map that was rumored to be by uh, one of the other sailors who had actually traveled there himself. But there was a catch. An orc pirate and his entire crew were also chasing Rickert because he stole that map from them. So starting off, uh, we all pretty much started like right out in the middle of the sea uh, where everyone was immediately attacked by the ri rival group of orc pirates. A quick fight ensued, along with uh, the ship, not only the, uh, what is it, the Salty Swallow? <laughs> yes, the Salty Swallow. The Salty Swallow, as well as the orc pirate ship, both quickly ended up getting engulfed by a mysterious presence below, which you all soon learned was a gigantic kraken creature. Uh, you all narrowly escaped by boat, uh, where you rode ashore towards uh, land, as you were lucky enough to find out. Uh, there, after a bit of uh, collecting your faculties, uh, Rickert decided to, to stay behind along with the crew who had survived the attack, as you all began exploring the island in full. So after about a few days or a few hours of exploring, uh, you ended up finding a mysterious ruin of uh, strange fish people, uh, who you learned were called Sahagan, as well as the remnant orc camp of those you had fought from before. Pretty much they had just kind of like come ashore and like those who had survived, they made this improvised camp just around these local ruins. So uh, after a bit of exploring uh, with some really clever ploys by uh, Trippy uh, with his character of Wolf turning into a spider, just scouting out the different rooms of the dungeon, uh, it was... Uh, Billy Bob Sack's character, uh, Shalar, who ended up scouting out the uh, orc camp along with Miriasphere's character, Arthas. Uh, things went a little awry, though, as Shalar was quickly captured, but one thing led to another, with Shalar freeing himself, finding a very large set of explosives in the middle of the camp, uh, pouring acid on it, where a unique chemical reaction caused a whole cloud of gas to knock all of the nearby orcs out. And with a fire a firebolt by Maji pretty much causing the entire camp to go up in flames. 
soon after that, you ended up meeting up with a small squat fish guy called Akuo Toa, going by the name of Clack O, uh, where he, you found that, strangely enough, uh, seeing that uh, Shalar was named who he was, there was some strange sort of uh, god complex going on there. And you were briefly led all the way over to uh, their corner of the island called Shell Harbor. And that is where we will be begin today. Uh, so you all are pretty much coming right into the threshold of the camp. And it's pretty much just a bunch of like very squat, like fish headed, like humanoids, all just kind of like looking at you with some sort of reverence to it, especially once Clacko announces that Shalar has come to the camp along with everyone else. You can see it's just a gigantic uh, camp of like uh, shell huts, gigantic shell huts, along with a moored pirate ship from what you can see. Pirate ship is very old. And uh, that is where we will start. So uh, with that, I would like to ask what everyone is doing. Wolf looks around and realizes right, we're missing someone. Wait, where's Arthas? Wink, 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 wink. <laughs> so uh, during your journey uh, to Shell Harbor, uh, there was a bit of a discussion between you and Arthas anyway. So Arthas uh, agreed to pretty much uh, split up with you all and uh, go and help out Rickard Flambe along with the remaining crew. Uh, there was a bit of an agreement that if anyone should come your way, especially like any word from Clacko or any of the other Kuotoa, that he would let everyone else know and they'd be coming right over. Okay. No, that's clarified. So there's a pirate ship here? That's just yes. like that? So it's very much kind of like this moored pirate ship, along with just like the surrounding kind of like shell huts. Uh, several Kuotoa seem to be kind of like going about their daily business. Uh, even so, a lot of them seem kind of downtrodden. But upon seeing like all of you coming into this like small little tribal camp, uh, their eyes kind of like go light all of a sudden. Hmm. Wouldn't they all be like swarming around Shellar at this point? What's Krako doing? Uh, Kalako has pretty much just announced that uh, all of you have come <laughs> into the camp. Uh, and you can already see that several Kuotoa are just like, Is this the fabled Shellar? I can see he, there is something divine about him. So Wolf is just like very confused and goes up to Krako. Why? Why are you so interested in this guy? He is Shinar. He is the Kraken who, who scours this island. He is the god who would normally eat us. But it seems that there has been a change of heart lately. Shelani does not impress him. She does not represent him anymore. Yeah, she was a liar, a very bad woman. A lizard, whatever the fuck she is. My character rolls her eyes, crosses her arms, and goes, of all the guys, why this moron? <laughs> Sheller, you got leverage here. Why don't you get some supplies for us? Maybe weapons? You can see I that there her. seems to be at least a few kiosks left around the town. Just kind of like very much kind of like street vendors. Uh, it's just one or two Kuotoa just kind of like sit, uh, sit uh, like squatting right outside of their shell. Just like a car, a small rug laid out with a bunch of like different items and curios kind of like scattered about. So cockatoo. Yes. How many soldiers do you got or people who can fight? Let's see. Last I counted, there was about 40 of us. And you're very experienced with fighting? Yeah. There is about at least half a dozen of us who have had, had experienced fighting. But with sheer strength of numbers, we could possibly overpower them. Hmm. And you said there's a back entrance with a cave, correct? Yes. It is the north path from here. 
If you were to exit the town from here, then we could all travel there. It is a hidden entrance, but Clacko knows. Well, before we do that, I think uh, me and my friends would like some refreshments, you know? Of course, of course. Nothing less for the great Shalar and his friends. And with that, uh, several Kuotoa just end up coming up to you. Uh, they immediately start offering you uh, different varieties of food and drink. It doesn't seem to be anything too elaborate, uh, but it is kind of like cheap wine, very basic food. Uh, you can tell that these that these people don't really have a whole lot to spare, but they're giving pretty much everything they can to you. My character leans over to Wolf and asks, um, is it cannibalism if we decide to make some fish fillets? Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. Damn. All right, fine. We're trying to recruit them, not eat them. Shalar turns over to fucking Ember. He's <laughs> uh, what was it? Is it Dr- uh, Infernal? Ember Sky? <laughs> yeah. Infernal is your language. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> I had a... <laughs> can, can Shalar speak Listen, in Infernal? Ember. Huh? Yes, Shalar can. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, turns to Ember and says, Don't let them hear you. You know, they wouldn't harm me, but you, I don't know. Also an inferno bag. If it looks like a fish and smells like a fish, it's probably a fish. Everyone who isn't speaking inferno, go ahead and make me an insight. Uh, Either an insight or a perception check. Uh, Let me see here. Where's my thing? Where's my Kirk sheet? Hold on. Ten. Where is That's the ten. Come on. Okay. This also an inferno. Besides, in your line of work, wouldn't you want to avoid the fish smell? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm just trying to be a of help to you. you know, <laughs> fish people, they're going to help us in a battle, which you know greatly reduces our odds of you know dying. All right, so from the dice rolls, Wolf, you can you can sort of like see as they're all talking, uh, Clacko is just turning to the others, and all of them are just murmuring ab- uh, about themselves. But it's very much kind of like expressions of amazement. You even catch a few hints of them saying, He's speaking the language of the gods. Yes, yes, that must be it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wolf just face palms. <laughs> the question of his life. So where did you get that ship? Well, it came here several years ago. It was manned by an in- by another man named Captain Borlis. He was uh, not the kindest sort, but uh, it was our masters, the Sohogan, who overtook his crew. A few managed to escape from what I could tell, but this greater vessel here stayed. Thankfully, we were allowed to keep it as part of our home. It isn't much, but it is something. Hmm. Is it still seaworthy? Yes. Perhaps with a few repairs, it could easily traverse the seas. We've had no use for it for now. This is our home, and we have no interest in leaving. Alrighty. How do you pronounce that lizard uh, name? Savagan? Sahagan. Uh, it's S A H U A G I N. All right. So Wolf uh, goes up to Krakow and looks at him and goes, <clears throat> How would you like to guys be free of the Sahagan forever? Never have to worry about them ever again all of them just kind of like gasp in amazement they're like you could do that you and shilar of course you have the power of the gods at your disposal how could it be anything else 
Yes, well, we would very much appreciate it. Here's the thing. We need your help as well. You have 40 warriors here, you said? Uh, all of them kind of look about uh, right around each other. And you can see that one of them starts counting. He's like, yes, we number about 43 in total. I've seen inside the ruins. They're only about 15 at the most. You have numbers. You can win this battle. Give me a persuasion check. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ooh, six you can you can still hear some uh dissent among the group and like yes there, there sounds like there's only so many of them but we've been beaten down before something doesn't sound right about this it looks like you my bolo goes, goes to goes two guys. But this time you have a god on your side. Uh Marvola, what are you saying? Um, I tell him the gods help those who help themselves. You got to help us drive them off your island. I like that persuasion. A bit more murmuring goes along. Like, yes, we do have the power of gods at our side. There's Shilar, if nothing else. They, after a bit of agreement, after a bit of discussion, all of them finally end up nodding their heads. They're like, we shall help you, however we can. We stake our very lives upon it. I ask right. him where these Zahagan get their food. Well, some of it is from us, but most of it, most of it is food that we offer up to them. Sometimes they will kidnap one of us. To eat as uh, delicacy. Tell me, are there any poisonous plants around? Well, uh, things you don't eat, things you get sick if you eat them. Every yeah. child knows the plants you um, can't eat. Wolf yes. looks around. I like Wolf looks around and tries to evaluate the plants too to see if he can recognize anything poisonous. Okay, uh, both of you make me uh, nature checks. Oh, come on. Let me do it. Can my character... <clears throat> oh, sorry, I did it twice. I don't know why. I'll, I'll go with the first roll there. So, Marvolo, uh, the Kuotoa gives you a little bit more info. He's like, I believe there is one or two plants among the island. I We have not dealt with them much ourselves. We have not had the use for it. We've tried to stay away for fear of killing our own. Uh, Wolf, I, looking around a little bit, you can see just kind of like off in the corner, just uh, of like one little copse of trees. You end up ruffling through some of the foliage. You can find uh, what seems to be a hint of nightshade. Uh, you end up tearing it off. Can my character... Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, yep. that's weird. My screen is frozen, so I can't tell. Can my character look around for anything useful in terms of her skill? Uh, What is Ember trying to look for? Um, <laughs> Knowing Ember, anything destructive. Hmm. Are, are you just trying to scour the island? Are you, are you trying to look for... Uh... For any types of plants, or is it kind of like scouring for supplies or something like scouring, that? Scouring, uh, scouring for supplies and potential, um, like raw materials that could be used for making things. Okay, uh, go ahead and give me an investigation check. Okay. I love Marvola's plan here, by the way. I see where you're going, Nikolai. Yeah. Totally with it. Um, I asked the uh, the guy. Uh, when is uh, the next food delivery scheduled? I got a 13. Uh, with a 13. So you end up looking around. Uh, there seems to be uh, several kind of like piles of supplies kind of like scattered among the camp. Uh, it seems like there is some of it uh, that could, that involves a bit of gunpowder here and there in particular, along with uh, bits of sulfur and different kind of like explosive materials. 
you also end up seeing that uh, part of what's kind of scattered around the place uh, is actually owned by the shop owner, by one shop owner herself. Uh, there seems to be several uh, items with certain magical properties, at least from afar. Enough to catch your eye anyway. Hey, Otter. Yeah. Uh, so I'm proficient in the Poisoner's Kit. I can also make, uh, po like, uh, what is it, like, poison to throw on, like, uh, little tiny, uh, you know, the arrowheads and stuff? Mm -hmm. Can I? My, yeah, you my can try... Character... You can My try doing that. Go in... ahead and give me an intelligence check and add your proficiency bonus to that. Whatever language. What language uh, I think I just rolled the intelligence check, don't I? Uh, yeah, and add, a, add another plus two to the roll. Okay, I don't know. Uh, what was it, Maji? Oh, no, you're good. I'm trying to remember what language I speak. And I believe Marvolo is going to do something. Um, yeah, I asked the, um, the the guy when uh, the next food delivery is scheduled. When are they, uh, the Sahagan, expecting the next delivery? The next food delivery should be due in about two days from now. They've eaten... Okay, so... To my knowledge, they must have eaten up a lot of what we've given them. The next shipment comes soon. A little too soon for our comfort. Yeah, okay, I wrote a 20. A 20. So yeah, uh, you end up taking just kind of like a few improvised uh, items, just kind of like between what the Kuotoa offer you based on your suggestion and just what you find kind of like in the surrounding area. You take a basic mortar and pestle, just kind of like grind up the nightshade, and uh, after a few more... Uh, minutes of mixing it in with a solution, you basically have yourself a pretty potent poison at, at your hands. Okay. My character starts to gather some of the supplies she finds lying around, especially the powders and the sulfates, and shouts over to Shalar in the language of the gods, hey, I sense a magical item coming from one of your shopkeepers. You might want to investigate a little. Godhood, dude. <laughs> Alrighty. What are we? All right. Are are you heading closer to the uh, magic items? I guess. Yeah, All right. So, along one of the kiosks, uh, you can see what seems to be a more elderly-looking Kuotoa, just kind of like uh, sitting in a squat position. Uh, she gives you a rather kind of like keen smile as you come up. She's like, "Oh, hello there! I am so glad to see you have come here." It is an honor to serve a god anyway. What can I offer you? I have many magical items at my disposal, which would surely help you in your holy quest. Is there any, uh, like, magical short bows or anything? Uh, so you can see from what she's offering up, uh, there seems to be a uh, rather peculiar-looking necklace. The beads on it resemble kind of like... Uh, sort of like a miniature codified fireball each. Uh, there are uh, two rather fine-looking scimitars. There seems to be a pretty special ring, along with two different varieties of potions. One of them seems to be regular healing potions, whereas another uh, glowers with kind of like a bright orange energy. Uh, I ask her uh, about the ring and the uh... The potion, the orange potion. Oh yes, this uh, ring here. It uh, it makes you quite a bit more resourceful in in battle. Anyway, uh, we call it a ring of free action. As for what kind of action, I am not entirely sure, but it is said to help make you faster. Anyway, I can attest that to I can attest to that myself. As for this over here, it is a potion of fire bread. You ingest it, and you are able to breathe fire upon your enemies. And what about the necklace? Oh yes, that is the greatest one of all. That is a necklace of fireballs. Detach one and toss it, and it acts the very same as a great ball of flame. 
And how much would you want for these? Well, it depends on the item. Pick one and I shall name a price. All three. Hmm. Well, let's see. The necklace of fireballs would be 1,000 gold pieces. The ring would be 500. And just one of the potions of fire breath would be 80. What would discount would you give to a god? Go ahead and give me a persuasion check with advantage. <laughs> Wait, shouldn't the bard be doing that? Uh, Can the bard uh, buff this? A, uh, persuasion? Yeah, persuasion with advantage. So roll twice. I don't think I would get the advantage. Uh, what was that, King Bob? Oh, she asked if the bard should be doing this. I am saying I don't think that I would get the advantage because he's the god. Yeah, I got 15. 15? And, yeah. All right. She ends up uh, looking at you. She's like, mm, I could probably, especially for a god, I could probably half the price of each of these. So the total price, we could slice that in half anyway. Let's see here. So in total, that would be right around 800 gold pieces for the lot. All righty. And then I hand her the gold. Well, it is pleasure doing business, especially with a deity. We <laughs> we can only hope that this will give you the finest of results. I'm sure it will. <laughs> Sweet. Good score. Totally worth it. You're going to make back a lot of that gold. A lot of gold. Oh, yeah. I gotta write down what the fuck I just took. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I can also give you the stat sheet for a couple of those. Uh, uh, let's see. That is one. And this is the ring of free action. Uh, let me... Add it to my character sheet. Yeah, Shelter's going to be selfish and just take it all for himself. Not, you know. I mean, I did just spend eight hundred my own gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be fair, Shalar has a lot of gold at his disposal. And Wolf saw the uh, the treasure room where the queen is, and piles upon piles. Right, upon I'm going to give gold. I'm going to give Magi the fireball necklace. She'll, oh, she'll certainly better. love you for that. My character looks at you in shock and then actually smiles and says, thank you. She didn't expect that from him. <laughs> well, you're better with explosions than me, you know? <laughs> All right. So what is everyone doing now? Uh, Wolf and Marvolo are like kind of looking at each other because they have like, they're on the same page with the plan and they got to figure out, um, so, Marvolo, how do you want to do it? How We need to find a way to convince these people to feed them with the poison on it. We have two days. No, 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 no. We uh, just um, lace the food with poison. The ordinary food, not the special sacrifice. Sacrifices are better. None of them are going to poison themselves and let them be eaten. Let themselves be eaten. Didn't Krakow say that the food's running low? Do they have yes. enough food to feed? So Wolf turns to Krakow and asks, uh, how are your food supplies here? In two days, can we deliver a food to the Sahagan? Of course. We, we give all we can spare anyway. And uh, especially with the food we have given you, it would be just enough. Just enough for our feet, for our, for us to feed ourselves in the meantime. Perfect. We also, in the meantime, meantime need to prepare for this great battle. And we need I'm not more. worried about the Sahagan. I'm worried about a Kraken. There's a deep cave underneath that ruin, and I'm pretty sure a Kraken lives underneath it. We can feed the Kraken, the poisoned Sahakan. 
I mean, would that work? <laughs> uh, they would still be poisoned. Yeah, would the Kraken eat the Sahagan? Or just, uh, I'm just predicting it's going to come up and attack us as soon as we get into that room. A fire-breathing potion. All right. Well, one thing at a time. We need to arm the 40 warriors with the best weapon and prepare for the worst. We got two days to train them to fight. Better. So I guess uh, Wolf and Marvolo will start rounding up the 40 warriors and get them uh, training. All right. So uh, I'm I'm going to go ahead and say this will be a regular charisma check by everyone involved. Uh, you, during, In the meantime, you can also tell me kind of like what you're doing to try and help out. And we can have extra rolls to see just how prepared all of the Kuotoa get in the meantime. So uh, first off, we'll go ahead and just do a charisma roll from everyone. Okay. Uh, the best. <laughs> uh, let me find my... I ruled a 17. 17, wow. Seven. Seven. And what did Shalar roll? Whew. That is actually just enough. So I'm so a collective roll. If you all hit 40 or higher, then it's a full-on success. I think you all just hit that, actually. Uh... So, in the meantime, uh, what ends up happening is, like, over the next couple of days, uh, you all begin... Uh, just kind of like giving basic uh, fighting instructions to those involved. I imagine both uh, Wolf and Marvolo are at the head of this uh, little offensive anyway. Uh, and pretty much just kind of like as day turns into night, night turns into day, and so on, uh, you can see that it there's a bit of a struggle at the beginning, but over time you can see once you hand a spear to the different Kuotoa and the longer you're actually instructing them, you can see that they're becoming steadily more proficient. Not expert, mind you, but just enough to fight anyway. Just enough to hold their own. And by the dawn of the end of second day, uh, you can tell that they they seem to have just enough of a hold anyway, at least to defend their own lives. And it is around that time that you can feel that something is different in the air about this morning on the island. Uh, especially Clacko comes up to you, and he just goes, I can tell that they are coming near. It is the Sohagen, anyway. We must prepare. Good. Uh, did we poison the food already? <laughs> That's what I was saying. Wolf pipes up, get the food prepared, go to Sheller, get the poison, tell him to poison the food. He's excellent at poisoning stuff. He's toxic. <laughs> All right. So for for you, Wolf, since you're going to be poisoning the food, I believe. Uh, go I ahead. Sheller has the uh, Sheller's the one with the toxic with the uh, poison, so he's got to do it. He made it, right? Yeah. I gave Shilar him the, got the poison kit. All right. Yeah. Shalar, uh, go ahead and roll me a sleight of hand check. Who am I deceiving? Uh, it's really just going to be how convincingly you're able to kind of like mix this into the food without it being clearly noticeable. Fuck you, Trippy. You're the one. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> if one of you wants to help along, I will allow it. It'll give you yes, advantage. Please. Because what, is what am I rolling for? A sleight of hand? Oh, All right. right, dude. No, I am proficient in sleight of hand, but uh, I rolled a fucking one. I'll do it. All right. So between Shalar and Marvolo, uh, you begin just kind of like pouring the poison over the food. And at first, it just 
looks like it very clearly be noticeable like all of the food quickly becomes discolorated uh but marvolo is able to just kind of like blend it in just enough without getting too much of the poison like on himself uh so by the end it looks convincing enough it still has a weird kind of like sheen to it but yeah um not actively looking close you wouldn't notice a difference Regurgitation can manipulate the taste of food. Can it uh, manipulate the look of it? Uh, I, I would say so. Pres, uh, prestidigitation is... Uh, you can do some uh, magical tricks with that as well that affects sight, right? Um, I don't know. I if he so. can, I'm pretty sure I can. What can Hilga do? I got minor <laughs> illusion. I could make it look like normal food. I have a question. Yeah. Since they were the ones training the fish people, is it possible I can roll and see if I was able to make any kind of weapon actually useful for the, from the supplies I gathered? Uh, yeah. Uh, go ahead and... I. What is the normal roll you use for uh, making your uh, artificer trinkets? Um, I think it D8 is, no, that's hit dice. Um, it's probably an intelligence check and I would add your proficiency to that as well. Okay. So my, my uh, proficiency is a plus two. So let me see. Yeah. Maybe I got a six, you know. I got a 16 with a plus two. I could okay. screenshot this to prove it if you want. No, it's fine. So, uh, Kind of like over the course of a couple of days, just mixing together uh, together the different powders in any way. Uh, it's not quite to the same professional level as like regular, like what you ended up blowing up a couple of days ago. But you can pretty much make a few sticks of dynamite out of it, really. So by the nice. end, you have about four sticks of dynamite at your disposal. I'm not complaining. <laughs> there you go. All right. But yeah, uh, along with just kind of like the help of Marvolo and kind of like a bit of illusion magic from Hilga, uh, you are able to make this food pretty convincing anyway. Oof. And with that, uh, you can see a small body of, uh, of Sahagan coming along the edge of the village. Uh, are you doing anything else or are you just standing your ground? Uh, we should hide. Yeah, no, Wolf and Marvolo, let's get it hiding, guys. Go behind some trees and bushes. Get out of here. Okay. All right, you do just that. And uh, as you can see very much from afar, the uh, Sahagan end up coming into the village and you see Klako addresses them directly. And they're like, it is our time for food. Pay, your, pay up your tribute. Klako just looks up at him, nods. He's like, give them the food. It is time. And uh, with kind of like a seeming reluctance, uh, they end up handing over the barrels of food uh, one by one. And uh, after a few minutes, probably about half an hour of just kind of like them getting all of it arranged, uh, the Sahagan in front, he just kind of like snorts at the Kuotoa before leaving. Next month, you must be on time. And do not hesitate. As they're about to leave, turns, wait. Ha. <sighs> And he ends up pointing towards the shopkeep. We take her as well. And uh, you can see that there's a bit of protest. The uh, shopkeep ends up resisting at first, but after a few moments, you can tell that she's quickly clasped in chains and led along with the Sahag. And uh, there's a bit of there's a bit of weeping as clearly they're losing another one of their number, but also a bit of acceptance. Anyway, after a few more moments, they end up leaving. As intended. So then that's when uh, Wolf comes out of the uh, hiding spot with the others. All right. Clacko, I'm sorry that happened, but we're going to go follow and make sure nothing bad happens to her. They should eat that food right away, get poisoned, all die, and we'll free her, send her back. Yes, I know. I. It is a risk. I do not want to lose Shalise, but she has accepted the risks, and so have we. We are with you. You and Shalar above all. Good. We need to split up into two teams. Klako, you know a hidden cave that goes into this side of the temple. I yes. think you and Shalar should take that 
with the warriors, while me and the rest follow behind the Sahagan. Oh, and then uh, Shalar pipes up to Wolf. I need to tell you about something. What? <laughs> In my profession, changing <laughs> into animals is quite a skill. Now, you told me that there was this lizard chick, you know, in the temple. Yeah, I'm just going to lead Wolf off <laughs> to continue this from everyone else. Where, where right. are we, what are we doing? Where are we going? Now, here's what I need you to do. You might not like it, but you could crawl up this lizard's ass and explode out. Shall My her. character raises an eyebrow going, what the hell are you talking about? You can't hear us. <laughs> I walked <laughs> off with him. Wolf just like stops, looks Sheller in the eye and goes, no. And just starts walking back to the group. Everyone get your stuff together. We got to start going. What a fucking dick. After a moment, Clacko just comes up to you, Shalar, and you're like, what was his problem? Ah, uh, he's got something stuck up his ass, you know. But what does that mean? Prepare. That sounds highly uncomfortable. It can be. Mm, I see. It is still a little over my head, but I will not question what the god says. Well, let's, uh, let's get our warriors prepared. And head to that cave. Very well. All right. So let's see. Go ahead and get a few of these out anyway. There. I'll say this is the Kuotoa right here. I, along with you, Shalar, I believe. And this is everyone else. All right. So from there, I'll I'll let you all go ahead and choose which path you want to take. So there's kind of like a forking road here, uh, right outside of the village, uh, and there seems to be a northern path which you haven't charted out yet. Uh, I mean, we got to follow the Sahagam, right? Or yeah, it looks like the Sahagan are going by this road. So I think that's the direction that Wolf's going to be going. And we should take at least half the warriors with us. Half uh, frontal assault, half through the secret tunnel. My character feeling concerned for the second group gave one of the dynamites away to the leader of the second group. Can I do that? Yeah, you can definitely do that. Uh, I imagine it is probably Klako, uh with you, Shilar. He ends up gracefully just taking the stick of dynamite off your hands. He's like, what is this? Don't put it near a flame. <laughs> oh, I see. I will try and keep it away. But what is it used for? It makes big explosions. Destructive. Oh. But useful. I'm guessing it's the fire that does that. Yes. It helps. Just tell him it does the same thing that happened to the orc camp. <laughs> oh, yeah. You remember the orc camp, Cockatoo? I do. Oh. Remember the big fire? I see now. I will use this well, selectively. <laughs> this will make a smaller explosion than that, but still useful. Hmm. Very useful. All right. I will use it with the utmost care. Now follow me. We must go north. Wolf right. um, also asked Krakow, is there anything else we need to know about this hidden passage? Is it submerged underwater? It is not submerged. It is rather abandoned. But the strange strange creatures inhabit it. I believe they are the they are an older race. The, the Sahagan who inhabit the ruins now. They are the original owners. Are they violent? Possibly, yes. They seem to be wild and feral. Wolf looks at Marvolo. I think they need all the warriors they can get. Yeah, and I I think the underground passage is a terrible idea. 
I think it goes to that one side uh, well that I saw on the map. But I think I got to drain it to get them up there into the into the ruins. Cockatoo, how many of these uh, crazy creatures are there? Well, no. there, there wasn't many of them. At least from what, what I saw, there was only one or two. But even still, they could possibly be dangerous. Well, it's a risk hmm. we're going to have to take. Yes, indeed. It, it, it does give us an advantage, though. All right, but I take ten with me. Very well. With, uh, the remaining thirty of us shall go with Shilar. Give me ten good fish. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I like those numbers. That should work. All right. Hopefully. As you all end up uh, trailing the Sahagan, uh, Shalar and everyone else ends up going north here. And after a little bit, uh, he ends up leading you farther and farther north up to an old cave anyway. So uh, it's up to you all who wants to try and start off this plan. We could go with either Shalar, Klako, and the old cave or the island ruins. I think the cave sounds like the place to start. Yeah, the caves. Uh, I'm curious what's going to happen in the cave. <laughs> All right. That connects down in here. Let's see. Go ahead and reveal an area here. Yeah, so, Shalar, Maybe you and Klako uh, end up emerging at this kind of like lone desolate cave. Uh, lurking just outside uh, of just kind of like this larger sort of mound uh, to where it goes. You're not entirely sure, though. What Clacko tells you, you believe that it ends up going into the Zahog and ruins. Uh, so, yeah, you can go ahead and place your character token there. And uh, I'll have a few that are representing the How did I do that platform? Uh, try and just take your character... Uh, your character icon over here and just drag it onto the map. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. There we go. Oh, and granted, you have like 30 of them with you. I, I'm using this as kind of like a rough estimate anyway. But from what you can tell, uh, just emerging into this small cave, uh, there seems to be going a bit farther down here eventually branching off into a fork in the path. Uh, you can go ahead and give me a perception check. Okay. A 12. So as you're beginning to come along here, you can hear kind of like a vague chittering uh, coming down from one path anyway. It seems to be right along this path on the right. It, it clearly doesn't sound very human. Uh, something very unnatural. Okay. Uh, I'm going to turn to Cockatoo. I'm going to try to sneakily go up this right path and see what fucking creature's up there. Wait here. If I come running back, you know what to do. <laughs> yes, we will do just that. I get a bad feeling about this. Yes. All right, so I need to make a stealth check. Yeah, go ahead and give me a stealth roll. Oh, fucking don't be a dick. Roll 20. Fuck you, roll 20. <laughs> All right. So uh, as you end up inching forward along the right path anyway, uh, you can see just peering around the corner, there seems to be two rather unnatural, uh, sort of like chitinous creatures just inhabiting this part of the cave. You can see one of them is looming over what seems to be an old skeletal corpse, uh, still wearing armor, actually, and with, like, a bag of goods setting aside. Uh, but even so, these almost seem to be just kind of, like, skittering about. They're, vi they're quite large, and in a weird way, they almost resemble crabs or something like that, uh, or s something like lobsters. Uh, they have sort of, like, these dangly tentacles 
right down from their face, along with two gigantic pincers each. Uh, as you end up coming closer, uh, you accidentally end up kind of like uh, clattering over a small pebble. Uh, one of them seems to just slowly turn its head. It doesn't seem like it's quite noticed you yet, but it's suspicious. Uh, we're going to turn back. <laughs> All right. Which way are you going? Uh, back to Cockatoo. All right. Uh, you can hear that this one is slowly moving in this direction. Uh, Clacko is just like, what did you see? Big giant fucking crab tentacles. Don't go down that way. What are you seeing? I may have tripped a pebble. Oh, well, we should probably keep our distance then. Yes. Well, where does the other way lead? Oh, we're about to find out. I'll be right back. Very well. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and make me another stealth roll. Oh, God damn it. 21. Nice. Okay. Uh, so, as you're kind of like skulking about back to uh, this part of the cave, you can see whereas before this uh, this creature, whatever it is, this large lobster, uh, it seemed like it had stood here for a couple moments, but after a little while, it eventually turned as, and resumed what it was doing. Further down this way, you can see that the corridor ends up winding a fair bit all before coming along what seems to be a rather decently sized pool of water before continuing. Can I make a perception check if there's anything lurking in that water? Uh, it just seems to be like a very small puddle. It's only ankle deep. Okay. Well, how is it when I'm trying to figure out how to type in the roll, it gives me a 20? <laughs> can, can I notice anything fucking on the roof of the cave? Uh, there seems to be some stalagmites, uh, a distinct smell of mold in the air, uh, but other than that, nothing quite as horrific as what was in the other cave. Okay, I'm gonna go get Cacatoo and we're gonna go down this path. Alright. Clacko's just like, well... There's another pool. We're going to go down that one. It's like a little okay. puddle. We are behind you. <clears throat> All right. I guess right. we're going to go. And with that, this. they end up following you down this leftmost path. And as you end up coming to that point, you can see that the path ends up going further, eventually merging at certain points for finally seems to be a much deeper pool at the very end. Uh, can I notice anything in that pool? Uh, you can see that it is quite deep. Uh, you can try and give me a perception check to see where it possibly goes. Okay. Eleven. So you're not entirely sure where exactly it goes, only there seems to be some sort of like underwater passage that ends up going further along this way. Hmm. I get cockatoo. Uh, hey, uh, what's your best swimmer you got? <clears throat> we are all great at swimming. We are Goatoa. Can I get one of y'all to hop in that pond and see where it leads. Mm. Yes, you. Come here. Try and try and scout out the place. Isa. Uh, he ends up stepping forward. Afterwards, he just ends up diving straight downward. A few mu a few minutes pass before he ends up reemerging, stepping out. He's like, Clacko, there is a, gr a larger room on the other side. It is a pool, and there are passageways. I did not see anyone immediately. Alright, well, we're going to start going up in there and getting up into this room. Alright. So, with that, each of you all end up coming along here anyway. And after a couple moments of swimming underwater, you end up emerging in this pool. And I would say that is also a good time to 
come over here as right around this point, uh, the rest of you end up coming right up to the entrance of the ruins uh, after tailing the Sahagan for quite some time. Uh, it's been about 20 or so minutes since they entered. You're not entirely sure if they've decided to eat yet or not. Uh, what, do you, what do the rest of you do? We send Wolf in to scout. <laughs> yeah, so... Wolf, spider! So Wolf take... takes the form of a spider and goes in to uh, scout out again to see what the Sahagan are up to now. All right, so you go shh, and emerge into a tiny little spider, uh, just end up skidding, skittering your way in. So with these Sahagan, uh, you can see that they are all, that several of them are going over here into this other passageway. Uh, there still seem to be a few up here along the top, but most of them have disappeared along the left passage. And what are they doing? Uh, go ahead and give me a perception check, unless you want to go into that room yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you can... so, crawled into the room to check out what the heck these guys are doing now. All right. As you're coming into this room, you can see that several of them are situating food around, but one of them, after a few moments, just goes, What are we eating? Uh, another of them is like, Soon, soon. Here you go. And all of a sudden, like, just immediately while they're all being handed like bits of food, uh, pieces of fish, clams, etc., all of them are just immediately kind of like slurping it up. Uh, they're very clearly hungry anyway. Perfect. One of them goes, something tastes odd about this. Another one goes, ah, just shut up and eat. So while they're eating... I'm going to scout up this part that I didn't go to before. Okay. Uh, you end up scaling up a wall, and that takes you to a small little bend in the corridor. Uh, yeah. That ends up taking you upstairs. This way. All right. So you're right along the feet of one of the Sahagan. End up going downstairs, and you know very well that this has a secret room. And to your right, you can see that Shilar, as well as several of the Kuotoa accompanying him, are now popping out of this pool. All right. So it's at this point that <clears throat> I change back to my human form. <laughs> uh, Shilar, all of a sudden you see just this, what seems to be an empty part of the room. All of a sudden, uh, Wolf is right there with you. Well, hello there. <laughs> Good, you made it. Exactly where I thought it went. When I a lot of the lizards are one. eating the poison right now. How long will it take for them to get affected by the poison? Uh, Shalar, you would know it'd probably be about twenty. It'd probably be about ten to fifteen minutes before it really starts hitting them in full. Yeah, ten to fifteen minutes before they start shitting out their ass or blood. Perfect. Gives us enough time to. Uh, Get ready, because as soon as those guys go down, we're going to assault the main queen up ahead. So, Wolf starts making his way back out this way. All right. You guys upstairs can't look down into the front corridor, can they? Uh, technic. Let's see. Uh, Actually, my character wants to have a look around and make sure that they won't get ambushed from behind. Are you going in there, Maji? Me? I can't go in there. I have no stealth abilities. I'm still sitting outside the temple, but okay. just got a feeling to look around. As for you, Wolf, go ahead and make me a stealth roll. Uh oh. So in the meantime, what, uh, Maji? What are what are you trying to find out? God damn it. If there's any of the lizard people outside or any potential dangers that we need to be aware of. Uh, they all missed. seem to have disappeared for the moment. Uh, as soon as the group of Sahagan ended up entering into the ruins, they all ended up briefly disappearing anyway. Okay. Seems like they're all preoccupied. Oh, shit. Where's, their, uh, where's the captive? Where's that uh, shop owner? 
Uh, no. so I haven't actually, seen her. No, you would have seen her. That is actually my bad. So she would be right of, around here. She was actually locked in kind of like the nearby storage area. Okay. Okay, so yeah, that's where that. So uh, are you at the door? Or are you trying to push into this main hall? Area um, here? I'm trying to push down there and go back outside to tell people to get ready for battle. Okay. So as you're coming along through there anyway, uh, you see that just as you're coming out into the hall, uh, one of these, as uh, Sahagan ends up taking notice, he's like, some sort of movement down there. Uh -oh. What is it? Is it in an intruder? Starts walking forward. What do you do? Uh, transform back into a spider. Okay. <laughs> Keeps coming down a few more steps. Looks around. He's like, hmm, must have been the wind. Turns around. <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny cliche well done all right <laughs> so he makes, back there when you need him. he makes his way back inside to the uh marvolo and the other and transforms back to a human marvolo right. they're consuming the poison right now in about 20 minutes so a good handful of them will die and we'll only have about five to fight where are they? Queen. Queen looks really tough. Okay. Um, did you see where they are exactly? The queen? Yes. She's in the far back room, right up the stairs. Straight shot. There's two warriors guarding her at the front door and two in the chamber guarding her. Three in the chamber guarding her. All right, we can take them. Just let the little guys run forward, and we do the rest. I tell right. my ten guys to array them in two lines, two lines of five. All right. Uh, as soon as you say that, they end up following your orders exactly as planned. Uh, they end up making two columns. Uh, one of them just ends up going, Now what are your orders? We wait 20 minutes, then we advance. Aye, aye. And they pretty much end up waiting, uh, just on, right. just standing I guess, on. Uh, yeah, Wolf transforms back to a spider <laughs> and goes to uh, Shellar. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Wolf, oh. tell him Related to attack them from behind when we enter. We will make noise. There's only two we're attacking from behind. <laughs> All right. And let's have fun. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. So Wolf uh, pops in on Sheller again. Okay. The main force is almost ready here at the front gate. In about 10 minutes after these guys get poisoned, we're going to come up the side here and attack while they attack from the front. What about this? What if we lure the, the Lizard Queen out and then I bring all 30 and we entrap her from the front and the back? What if you just okay. listen to what I say? No, I'm not. Damn it. You, we would have 10 in the front, 30 in the back. I already coordinated this with Marvolo. In dying, about 10 man. minutes, they're going to come through that front door and expect battle with the two up ahead of us. We'll take him out quickly, go through the front door, assault fast with 40 warriors, and kill the queen. Do you know if there's any exits or any escape routes the queen can take? The sheer speed that we're going to attack her won't give her a chance. She's not expecting this. Sure. Are you ready? No shit. Now I got to wait for these uh, all 30 of them to come through this pool. By this time, they've all come out okay. from the pool. They're pretty much swarming the surrounding sides of this room. Yeah, I'm being getting really sorry. In fact, so, it's starting to become a little difficult to try and have them all keep quiet. How much time we got left when the poison starts? Uh, it's about 10 minutes have passed already. 
Okay. All right, I guess we're just going to wait. Yeah, my character's leaning against a wall, flipping a stick of dynamite, just waiting. <laughs> Twirls up in the air, catch it deftly, smirk a little <laughs> bit, continue. It's quite a show, actually. A few of the Kuotoa are actually impressed by your show of skill. <laughs> Marvolo, you, Marvolo uses uh, prejudice to light the fuse. Why? <laughs> And then a waste of dynamite. Two seconds later, he sniffs it out again. Well, that <laughs> just, just to see the panic time. in her eyes. No, she wouldn't panic. She just like that shortens our timer. <laughs> All right. Uh, by that time, about another five minutes pass, and though there's no sound going on at the same time, this should be right around the time that something ends up happening with the Sahagan. Now is probably the best time to strike, if ever there was one. All right, guys, advance! And the ten fish people walk up into the temple. All right, I'm going to go A ahead. A line of five with shields and short swords, and behind them, spearmen, spear fishmen. Okay, so these two guys are representing the two, uh, two rows the two columns of Kuotoa going in. Uh, so the rest of you can go ahead and place down your tokens anyway. With that, these two Sahagan immediately take notice with the fairly numerous amount of uh, you all coming in. They're like, attackers, where's the rest of you? Hello? Is there anyone here? Ah, we'll have to deal with them ourselves. And with that, that will be initiative. I heard fried lizard is tasty. Mm. Mm. Uh -huh. <clears throat> 13 for Shalar. Damn, I ran a throw. <laughs> Oh, it's a 13 for Marvola. Marvola. Mine's a three. All right. Three for Shalar. And let's see. It was a... What am I seeing? 10 for Hilga. And who am I missing here? Wolf, it was a 13. Yeah. Okay. And let's see. Remove Arthas. Oh no. Yeah, it's fine. Just move Arthas down here. All right. So, also need to roll for the enemies. And that is not a very good roll. Nice. They get a five. All right. So first up, no, twice. Uh, uh, Ember, did you end up rolling? You got yeah, a five as well. Five. She rolled a five. Mm -hmm. I All did. Right. I'm not sure what that means, but yes. That means you go just before or after the enemies, depending on what the DM decides. Oh, gotcha. All right. So first up is Marvolo. As you're entering into this place, uh, you can see the two Sahagan just kind of like rapidly coming down the stairs, uh, just kind of like drawing their spears in the meantime. What do you do? I, I immediately draw my bow and fire at them. Okay. Uh, are you firing at the one on the left or right? On the right. On the right. So, all right. A 16, 16 is going to hit. So go ahead and roll me some damage. Eight. Eight damage. Okay. All right. So uh, the first one uh, pretty much just ends up thudding straight into his shoulder. Uh, he just sort of gasps out in pain, uh, but he still ends up advancing. It is not a lethal wound anyway. Uh, are you doing anything else moving anywhere? Um, no. All right. And with that, it is going to be on to Wolf. 
so in the uh, square in between the two uh, lizards and back one of them, mm -hmm. I'm going to summon my wildfire spirit. It's going to be the shape or the form of a um, wolf. It's a great, like, a, it's a fiery wolf. And <clears throat> they have to do uh, succeed on a dexterity saving throw against my that, or they'll take 2d6 fire damage. All right. Going to roll for both of them. Is that a double roll? No, it's just a one. Ooh. Uh -oh. That's not good. So one of them got a 16, the other got a natural one. So I'm guessing that's one success. Dodged yeah, into the six, fire. Six fire damage. Six fire damage. Okay. All right. So immediately as this fire spirit is conjured up, uh, just kind of like a, this whirlwind of flame it ends up engulfing both of them for the moment. Uh, you can see that it sears part of their scales already, but they're both still standing. They are shocked very much, however. One of them is just like, what? What is this? Uh are you moving anywhere or doing anything else um yeah i think i'm gonna move out here to give space for the uh, warriors to come out because it's getting kind of cramped right there okay all right next up is going to be hilga so hilga all of a sudden these two sahagan are coming down these stairs when all of a sudden arrow plunks into one uh all the while a fire spirit just kind of like brings them both off guard what do you do uh, what's the range that they are from me? Uh, so let's see. Where is your token right now? Uh, token. Uh, do you have a token? Do I have a token? I don't think you do. Uh, let me put one down for you. That'd probably make it easiest. There you go. I'm going to use the lobster for you if that cool. works. I'm a lobster. <laughs> All right. Jordan Peterson, be happy. So from here, anyway, it's about 45 feet from you to the cards. others. Uh, 45, that's in range of my crossbow, so I can shoot him. All right. Uh, which one are you firing at? One that's already wounded? Yeah, let's go for the one that's already wounded. All right. Go ahead and give me a roll. Only a 12. 12. A 12 just hits, actually. Hmm. It's 5 damage. 5 damage. Okay. So uh, another bolt just ends up going straight into the chest of this one on the right. Uh, this time he, he just makes an audible groan. Uh, he's very heavily wounded. Seems to be staggering quite a bit. Uh, but at the moment, he's just trying to basically survive. He's still alive, however. All right, Hilga, are you moving anywhere, or are you just staying put? Uh, I think I'll move to where that second black dot on the right is. What is that? This one? Yeah. Uh, that is actually one of the pillars lining along this room. Oh, good, so, so I can use it as cover. Yeah, it would be kind of like partial cover against them. That's so fine, I'm, I'll take partial cover. So you're moving right behind it there. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up is going to be the enemies. Uh, so they're actually, they're probably going to be preoccupied with getting rid of the spirit anyway. Uh, so one of them is going to try and immediately attack... Uh, Actually, one of them is going to try and go a bit closer to, uh, hmm. Yeah, he, they would probably attack. So first up, let's see here. He's going to try and bite at your fire spirits. Uh, that is an 18 to hit, Trippy. Uh, that hits, it's 13 for armor, so. 13? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to end up taking three points of piercing damage from that. Okay. And it's going to try and bring up its spear a couple of times and just try and stab at it. 
And both of those are a 14 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Okay, that's going to be another... It's going to be another 8 points of damage in total. Uh, the thing only has uh, like 8 points in total, so I think I just popped it back into flames. It's uh, hit points are 5 plus time... 5 plus... Five times your Drew level. Oh, five times my Drew level. I thought it was just five plus my Drew level. Okay. Five so after Drew this level. one, Sahagin <clears throat> is just like it's scrambling to point. try and free himself of this. Uh, okay. It just kind of dissipates after he stabs at it a few times with his spear. Well, I, I think it's still there because I, I'm, I messed up. It's it's actually 20 plus. Yeah, it's um, 20 HP. Yeah, oh, okay. It would have been 20, so 20, been 20 minus uh, how much? Eight? Yeah, 20 minus 8, so it didn't have so, 12 left. 12 health, so, yeah, that's good. Okay. The ne second one is going to try and attack again. Uh, so that's an 8 for the first one. Uh, it's got 13 armor, so no hit. A 13 and a 19. Uh, again, it's armor's 13. Does that hit, or is that just cancel out? 19 hits. Uh, so 13, if it meets or it succeeds, it hits. So it the meets, first attack so it misses its bite ends up missing it entirely, just kind of like goes off to the side. But once it rears up its spear, it hits both times. So that's going to be an extra six points of damage against it. Okay. okay. All right. So, so it, it's heavily wounded, your fire spirit, but it's still standing, and these Sahagan are very much freaking out over it. With mm -hmm. that, that is pretty much going to be all they can do. So it's back to you, Wolf. What the hell? Is... Um, why is it back to me? Uh... Well, it, wait. Oh, yeah, no, I'm on there twice. twice. I can't be on there twice. <laughs> oh. It's Ember's turn. That's weird. Okay. Yeah. Just get wait, me. My bad. Uh, when, when do the warriors go? That is. A they good... go with Sheller. Do they go with Sheller? Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. They're All glued right. to Sheller. We have two sets, though. You can't get away so from would the one fish. set go do one yep, thing? Yep, my tens would go with me. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. Level. Okay, just checking. All right. So, Ember, it is now your turn. There's so only one fish. Doing? There's only one salamander left, right? Uh, there are two of them left. It's just one of them is very heavily wounded. Not worried about the wounded guy. Ember pulls out her crossbow and aims for the one with more health. Okay. I'll put this token down for you. Aims for the one with more health. Yep. All right. Go ahead and give me a roll for that. Uh, that's a hit D8, right? Uh, it's uh, it's going to be a roll of your D20 plus whatever your attack bonus is for that weapon. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> That is unfortunate. <laughs> My attack uh, bonus is hold on. I have slight redemption. There is a plus uh, two. Uh, Woohoo! I got a three. Yeah, unfortunately, the natural one ends up making it worse because of it. Uh, yeah. So this is basically going to be a fumble in this case. So you end up aiming up your crossbow, but in the chaos of the situation, uh, you slightly veer off a little towards the right, uh, and you still end up hitting. But instead, it ends up hitting the fire spirit instead. Sorry. Go ahead and roll me some damage against the spot against the fire spirit. Uh, what roll? Twenty or eight? He should use the fire. Attack. Crossbow is one d eight plus your dex. Okay. Oh shit! All right, that's another six points of damage against the fire spirit. Is it still standing? Not after I that. I have no deck, so it. there's no bonus just, there either. <laughs> it had six health. You just popped it. <laughs> that's unfortunate. I uh, killed your spirit. Sorry. Just slightly aiming askew, the bolt fires forward, and uh, with all of that, the fire spirit just dissipates into nothingness. All of that. Uh, the two Sahagan are kind of like, they breathe a sigh of relief, all before turning their attention back to you. 
I... Just because you're jealous that someone else used fire. <laughs> Are you doing been. anything else, Ember? I should have just stuck to my guns and used fire. This is what happens when I use weapons. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Uh, no, no, she's pretty much just sitting there trying not to shoot herself. <laughs> All right. With that, it is uh, up to Shalar and the Kuotoa you have at your side. All 30, 30. of them. 30. I'm not yeah. rolling individual rolls for each of them. No, give them. Uh, we're going to spell out towards the top over here where Wolf is at. Okay. And I'm already at my bow and shoot at the weakest one. All right. Uh, that would end up being this one. So go ahead and give me an attack roll. A 10. So unfortunately, that ends up just going a little aside. Uh, it ends up hitting the wall instead of the Sahagan itself. So unfortunately, I hate miss. fucking roll 20. <laughs> the dice are not on your side, or at, the virtual at, dice. At least you didn't kill freaking Wolf's Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> that is very true. Uh, so, Shalar, what do you want to do with your Kuotoa? Uh, I will let you command them, uh, but I will go ahead and roll for whatever you're doing with them. I guess they end up Attacking both of the dumbasses, the lizards, okay. salamanders. So they pretty much end up scrambling out here, one by one. And this is not representative of space at all here, but it's going to be three rolls for all of them. And these don't look to be very good rolls anyway. But let's see. It looks like the first one is going to hit, though. And that's going to be against this weakest one here. And we'll go ahead. Okay. So this one, just immediately, with all of them just kind of like coming on in mass, uh, this one Sahagan is just immediately pummeled by like a hailing of spears as he's quickly overwhelmed anyway. Uh, you don't even see the Sahagan anymore, or just kind of like a bunch of like wailing and screeching. Uh, but somehow this one based off against 20 of these Kuotoa, is somehow able to kind of, like, keep his ground anyway. Uh, right. Shalar, are you doing anything else? Uh, not really. Okay. Marvolo, it's up to you and your 10 Kuotoa. Did I give them slings? Uh, if you... I would imagine you did beforehand. So I I tell all ten of them to attack with slings. Okay. Uh, so that will be ten of them in total. Go ahead and roll for them, and it's a very good roll. Uh, so that would be. Let's roll here. Finally, somebody gets a useful roll. All right, and with that, this other Sahagan is just immediately kind of like brought down under a hail of uh, of just sling pellets in general, just immediately overwhelmed as well. And with that, the two Sahagan are just killed outright. Klacko is like, did we do it? We got the queen left in the room above. That is true. We must hurry, quickly. Wolf looks at Klacko. Klacko, the shopkeeper's in the prison downstairs. You might come across a lot of bodies down there. Be careful. Okay. They're not alive, though. Okay. Me and a couple others will go down that way. Oh, we'll cockatoo, you know before you alive. leave, I need that dynamite. Oh, yes. He ends up pulling out the stick of dynamite, tosses it to you. Catch. I catch it. <laughs> Roll right. a deck saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> now that you mention it, no. Uh, <laughs> and with that... Uh, Shalar ends up, uh, not Shalar, Clacko ends up going this way. Um, all right, what are the rest of you doing? I would like to check out, uh, the room, uh, with the corpses and see if they are all really dead. Okay. Uh, so turning aside the store anyway, uh, you come in, uh, That's seeing me. that it, oh, that is my bad. I would have Come done in. the same thing anyways, though. Seeing that it is just a room f 
filled with corpses. Uh, a lot of them seem like they've kind of been like uh, suffocated in agony. Many of them are purple in the face, but they're all kind of like limp. Uh, their uh, gluttony ended up getting the best of them. Uh, and just kind of like in one corner of the room, you can see both Klako, uh just kind of like comforting a rather frightened looking Kuotoa, who you recognize as the shopkeeper Shalise. Okay, I burn the rest of the poisoned food just in case. Okay, uh, take out your tinderbox. After a few cracks, it all starts going on fire. Uh, however, the smoke starts to fill the room rather quickly. I exit. Okay. And they pretty much follow you just as quickly. What are the rest of you doing? Wolf goes up to Scheller and um, says, there's a couple, there's a false wall down this hallway with treasure behind it. Do you know how to open it? Here, let me go check. Oh shit, I'm on the fucking <laughs> stream lab. That's why I couldn't move my token. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong screen. But yeah, as, okay. you, as you end up coming t up to this door right here after Wolf points it out to you, uh, you're able to kind of like move aside the door rather quickly. Uh, it, it isn't trapped or anything. It basically just function functions like a simple stone door once you notice it. And inside, uh, you end up seeing a large treasure chest along with a couple of uh, base reliefs on either side with some carvings along them, uh, as well as two larger statues kind of like flanking the large chest there. Okay, Wolf... Uh... Turn into some, turn into a spider and go in that room. Let's <laughs> see what's in there. Isn't the door open? In that room. <laughs> I, oh, uh, I, I assumed you kind of like pushed the door open like it was nothing. Yeah, Scheller, you, Scheller, what are you talking about? Look, you can see it's a treasure. You like treasure? Yeah, take your go spider and go over to it. No, you go open it. Can I get an insight? <laughs> can I get an insight on the smoke? Wait, can we do a rock, paper, scissors? So how would we do it? <laughs> yeah, you can do rock, paper, scissors. Uh, Maji, what are you doing? I, can I use an insight to see if the smoke is going to be a problem or not? Uh, Yeah, you go ahead and give me a, just a regular intelligence check. Okay. So what are we doing? Rolling a d20 against each other? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you do rock, paper, scissors on here. Mm. Oh, shit. You know what? I'm done with this. <laughs> hey, hey Maji, you noticed that it's smoke. <laughs> I think I you wanted to know if it would be right a problem or cause suffocation or, you know, brain function. Shit. I'll say you see this much with the smoke, Maji. Uh, there is a purple hue to it. Other than that, you're not sure if it would be good or bad. Can I use an arcane perspective on the purple hue? An arcane perspective? Are you are you Our trying to do an arcana insight. check? <laughs> you can roll me an arcana check to see if you know anything about it. Okay, I'm gonna try, damn it. I'll just check if it's magical, really. Exactly. You know what, it's better than nothing. Wait, are you checking out the fire that Nikolai just started? Yeah, yeah he just poison. lit poison on fire. Mm -hmm. I want to know if it's going to be safe to breathe. In that room, I'm sure it's not, but... Hey, I got 19. 19. No, would... uh, you're making a, an arcana check. You notice rather quickly that there is no real... Uh, there's no magical properties to this. I'm going to be a little generous here, though. Just from your basic knowledge of uh, alchemy and chemistry in general... You get the feeling that the smoke might be a little poisonous. You're not sure how much the smoke will end up going out, but it doesn't seem very safe to breathe. Well, uh, boys, if you guys got any bandanas, I recommend putting it over your face. I don't know if he's trying to kill us or not, but just in case, we should, you know, not be breathing this in. Alright, Wolf's like hearing this commotion from up here, like, what? What's going on down there? Are you starting fires? Shall I open the This time it wasn't me, okay? I'm just telling wow. you that it might be a little dangerous. 
Wait, we are safe down here. Smoke uh, is hot. It moves up, up towards the queen. Can oh, I do, yeah, that's, can I do that's a perception go check well. on that chest to see if there's no traps or anything in that room? Uh, go ahead and give me an investigation check. Yeah, I was going to say that's investigation, not perception. And Wolf uses control flames to put out the extinguisher fire that Marvella started. Okay. Uh, you, you end up coming along uh, using your druidic powers. The fire quickly distinguishes, and it takes a few minutes, but after a while, the poisonous smoke slowly dissipates. Uh, There's another night. hidden wall inside the room where the shopkeeper was heading, to keep being kept. To the left, there's hidden treasure in there. We need to get into that room. Don't fill it with poison gas. I wrote right. a 19, Otter. Uh, so the chest itself doesn't seem to be trapped at all. However, the statues next to you seem uh, are just a little intimidating. There doesn't seem to be anything tri uh, trapped about them whatsoever either. Uh, I guess I'm going to walk over to the chest and chest, <laughs> see if I can open it. All right. Uh, it opens without any effort. And within, you end up finding about 128 gold pieces, as well as a potion of greater healing and a potion of fire breath. Okay. <laughs> we really like fire on this crew, don't we? Yeah. That's very good. Speak for yourself. All right, I grab that shit and just head oh, back. Oh, I into totally the like fire. <laughs> All right. Circle of the wildfire. Wolf's all about fire. All right, uh, so Wolf, now that the smoke's a little bit clear, comes to this uh, false wall that's over here, moves the barrels out of the way, and investigates this area. Okay. I'll, once you end I'll up go moving, with him. Once you end up moving the barrels out of the way, you see that it's a small little alcove uh, that pretty much you can end up crawling into. Uh, which ends up leading out to this over here. And so within this secret room, you end up finding a uh, small little steel rod uh, with horse heads on either end, strangely enough, an odd ornament, as well as a rather immaculate looking shield on this, uh, uh, on this altar, as well as tons of gold pieces, which counting it up, numbers up to around 520. So Wolf just sees the the odd golden or the odd rod thing with the horse heads and says, "Finally, my hands are upon it." And grabs it and takes it. This is what it is. What is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? It's an immovable rod. You can't do anything. <laughs> Perfect. No. Exactly what I wanted. That is what you end up finding. As well as looking at this uh, <laughs> shield, uh, it is a plus one shield. <laughs> it is very fine. Um, How unfortunate has no that our in paladin that. went off he with just the fist this, bro. <laughs> uh, What was that, Trippy? Wolf is not interested in anything else. He just wanted that. <laughs> okay. And what were you saying, Marvolo? Um, I said uh, it's too bad that our paladin went, also went a different way. He could have used the shield. No one else is using shields, are we? I know, right? No. All right. So I just take the shield and put it in my backpack. Okay. You're not so much putting it in your back pocket as you're kind of like <laughs> slinging it behind you. How do you know? He might have a shield-sized back pocket on his pants. I'm going to go on a limb and say no. <laughs> Unless you can prove me wrong, Marvolo. Nope. Okay. Then you're slinging it behind you. It's just a big giant flap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but other than that, the room seemed to be relatively clear aside from this curtain hanging in the back here. 
I tell my ten to move up the stairs and take position left and right. Aye, aye. And they moved up rather quickly, flanking on either end there. Pretty much drawing up their slings as they do so. <laughs> Are we ready? Hold on, I'm making a note here. <laughs> Sorry. This is looking so funny what this thing is. I'll find some use for it. All right, so Wolf, yeah, moves up here too. Gets next to Marvello and tells him, uh, all right, the queen's inside with three guards on the side of protecting her. Be sure that everyone's ready for this fight. I don't know how tough she is, but she looks strong. Sheller, is your men ready? Are your fish ready? They've been ready. Fish time. That's right. We are ready. We are ready to serve Shilar. Send them in, Shilar. They're your army. Uh, yeah. Well. Should uh, we be concerned yeah. that they might get turned into uh, bait? Okay. We're Maybe just going to send all four of them into the room. <laughs> Is that what you're doing? Pull assault. Wait, oh. my my ten stay with me. <laughs> no, you can go with <laughs> go in the room as well. My my character tries to convince them that's a bad idea and that Chum uh, draws sharks. This is for uh, this is a uh, their chance for freedom. They're gonna be crying freedom as they attack their oppressors. All right. So for those of you who are trying to convince them to do otherwise, aside from Shalar, you're you're gonna have to make me a persuasion roll. Because naturally, they're all kind of leaning towards the command of Shalar at the moment. I'm afraid to roll, but I will try because this feels <laughs> like a trap. It's be funny. <laughs> well, I mean, would you rather go in there? Well, you could send the spider in just to double check. That's yeah. We what have a spider. Why, why? Never mind. I'm rolling. You guys can't see uh, what's in there. I got a ten. <laughs> ten. All right, so, so Ember, you you try just end up uh, bringing up a few words of dissent, but it seems like most of the Kuotoa unfortunately ignore you. Marvolo kind of like adds on to what you're saying. Just try. I order wait. I order my ten to stay with me with a fourteen. Trust me, you don't want to become fish sticks yet. <laughs> yeah, that's what you end up saying. Only about half of them actually end up obeying you. <laughs> the other half end up flocking straight towards Shalar. Wolf, would you uh, like well, to like go in there and check before we send them there? <laughs> Just I've in already case. seen it. I've already checked inside there. You I could go check again, there, but like but days for ago. traps. Did you look for traps or did you look for enemies? Okay. These ancient ruins I'll tend to have issues. Go in again. If I see Was there any alarm I'll raised? Tell you. A wolf transforms into a spider and goes back inside and looks. It's been two days. Is it? Okay. Should I do a perception check for traps and shit? Uh, so you're not going to need a perception check for traps. Uh, from what you can see, uh, you see that as you're kind of like skittering back into this room, uh, it seems to be a little more on alert than from before anyway. You can still see that this... A uh, Sahagan priestess is just still lounging on her throne, but it, it doesn't take much for you to recognize that she's very much kind of like expecting you at this point. Uh, the Baron at her side is just kind of like brandishing his trident with glee, as well as these two Sahagan. Uh, they're very much kind of like on alert. They have their spears bared. As for the pool behind her, the crack and tentacles just seem to be kind of like writhing in anticipation. Almost as if it's expecting you as well. Hmm. Weird. Almost as if that's what I was expecting to see. Let me go back and tell the crew. Wolf transforms back into a human. They're expecting us. We need to assault hard, heavy, fast. The Kraken tentacles are actually showing right now. This is going to be a battle. No getting around it. No traps. No nothing. Freedom is what's at the end of this battle. Are you ready? I tried to warn him. 
There's no other way, Maji. <laughs> freedom! <laughs> they need to correct freedom. Uh -oh. All right, uh, give me I a persuasion check. Who, me? Uh, Amber, you should probably Ed. blow it up. <laughs> I know, that's why I'm like, wait, why? We got two sticks of dynamite. Actually, I have four. You have, well, three. You have one and I have three. Not to mention I'm an artificer, so I can conjure up a mini cannon at will. Freedom! Wait, wait, wait. wait. In that room? Why aren't <laughs> we just blowing up the door and lock them in there? Because you have to finish the fight. You have to, It's boss fight. You can't just end the game without finishing the boss fight. We also have not found the gold, people. I actually oh. have an anime that's uh, it's in the just room. proved that <laughs> idea. All right. So, Wolf, you're, with your persuasion roll, all of them just immediately end up raising their fists and going, Freedom! We will <laughs> we will free our people from the Sahagan. Shinar is ultimate. He is eternal. You are not! <laughs> they don't care. Uh, Sacrifice. Sacrifice is necessary, Ember. Let's go. Are you all going in with them, or is it just the Kuotoa? Well, we're gonna go behind them. We're going behind them. Back. We're going behind them. We'll go behind them. <laughs> we'll go behind them. That's for sure. Okay, you're going in behind oh them. I, I know better. Uh, something tells me that they're gonna get their asses kicked. Yeah, there's forty of them, man. There's forty. They're fish. <laughs> they got spears. They got swords. All right, <laughs> I'm moving all of them up, except yeah. for Shalice. Shalice is hanging behind. She's I stay little... in the door. I'm, I'm not entering the, the room. The little woman is going to live to see the <laughs> extinction all of the species. The all right, it's not so... like the queen. It's a crack I'm worried about. So as you're all just kind of like charging in, uh, you can hear immediately uh, as you come into, as you bust through the dump, uh, double doors, you hear, HALT! And are you all still attacking or are you just... Oh, I never proceeding. went through the door. I'm waiting to see what happens. Okay. So who's, the Kuotoa wait, are cho charging forward. Are you all who, are who you all proceeding hold? with the attack or are you halting? Who said halt? Uh that was the Sahagan priestess. The queen? The priestess? Yep. yep. Um I raise yeah. my bow and shoot at the priestess. <laughs> Wolf holds his hand up. Hold on one sec. For we We're outnumbering her. Do you surrender? You guys are morons. <laughs> the priestess looks at you and she's just like, tell me, why do you emerge now into my chamber? Why now do you choose to attack? Clacko? We desire freedom for our people. We follow Shilar. Shilar has betrayed you. No, you have betrayed Shilar. He is ultimate. He is eternal. All the while, she just chuckles. Shilar, truly leading you. What hogwash. Your I god like is nothing but a I like dynamite and fucking throw it at her right when she's <laughs> What are you doing? I lit the dynamite and I fucking chucked it at her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Wolf's make... eyes widen. Amber smiles. Now roll. we're talking. How do I do the roll? It's going to be a, a rain. Well, technically it's thrown. Uh, it's going to be a, like a regular attack roll for you. <laughs> Should you can go either weapon. with dexterity or uh, strength for this. Can uh, I imbue the weapon and strengthen it? it? It's thrown, so technically you can also do strength. 14. <laughs> 14. Okay. All right. This actually does land just by her feet. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look at my notes really quick. <laughs> <laughs> Aha. Okay. Go ahead and roll me 66 worths of fire damage. Who, all of us? Uh, you, Shalar, since you threw it. 66 it magic? Rolls? Uh, so just roll six six-sided dice. 
Oh, that's the gotcha. amount of fire damage that it's going to be doing yeah. as it detonates right next to her. <clears throat> Just I did it. It's 21. 60, Actually, it's going to be detonating right next to a few of them. I'm, I'm, how many of the uh, D6s am I rolling? 21. I already rolled it. Just to Six. save time. 21? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Alright, I'll go ahead. Alright. With that, a gigantic explosion and pretty much ends up erupting. And it's not just her, actually. One second. Uh, pretty much all of the enemies within the room are more or less just kind of like devastated from the attack. Uh, as well as... Who is closest to this happening? Um... No, I don't think any of you all would be affected by that. No, so, it would be Cockatoo, wouldn't he? He's like the first one in there. Yeah, it'd be Clacko. He is actually affected by this. <laughs> Clacko, oh, no. Maji. Maji have to speak. <laughs> and with that, I, Clacko, right as the dynamite detonates, Crack, uh, Clacko just kind of scatters to pieces. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> His sacrifice will not be in vain. Uh, you are but evil. with that, all of the enemies here are pretty much scattered along the floor. Many of them seem to be heavily wounded. However, the uh, priestess as well as the baron seem to be both very much alive. The priestess ends up coming back up. She's like, that was hardly necessary. Tell me, there is this whole effort of yours is futile. You cannot leave this island. You know of that, right? The real Shalar will overtake you. Look, Kuotoa, this is your <laughs> goddess. The one standing before oh, you is a fake. <laughs> the Kuotoa, meanwhile, look at the literal kraken tentacles coming across. It's like, they're all like, surely, surely she is lying. That is not Shilad, is it? No, it's right? not Shilad. Nope, nope. Uh, see, she stole hey, my Shilar? power. And Demonstrate me your me. power. Here's another dynamite. <laughs> Alright, take another dynamite and light it. And fucking throw it. <laughs> <laughs> I still got two more. Plus some cannon, we're good. Alright. Is that what you're trying to do? Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me check really quickly. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and make me a wisdom saving throw, because as well, you're beginning to do honest. this, as you're beginning to do this, you can see that the priest is, is actually holding out one hand straight towards Shilar. Mm. Oh God. Nine. Uh -oh. Nine. We're dead. Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately, you end up failing. Uh, let me just make sure yeah, that... Yeah, because you just don't happen to make us do a wisdom shit. Yep. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. I have a ring of the free movement, don't I? Yes. Doesn't that keep it from doing any paralysis or anything on me? I mean, ring of free action. Magic can neither reduce your speed nor cause you to be paralyzed or restrained. Wait, does the ring actually counteract that? Let me check really quickly. Well, it says uh, no magic can paralyze me or restrain me. Oh! Uh -huh. That is exactly what uh -huh. it says. It's, uh -huh. You're lucky then, because Good that would have paralyzed you, in fact. She was, uh -oh. she was casting <laughs> the old person. Uh oh Here comes another <laughs> stick of dynamite. Toss another <laughs> stick of dynamite. <laughs> 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 Go ahead and roll me another ranged attack roll. But with that, once this hits, it's going to be initiative. <clears throat> Hopefully I don't roll it, Ben. 16. 16, Damn. that's going to hit. <laughs> roll me Someone some roll the damage for me. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> She gets up. 
She gets up again. <laughs> you know, she logs 24. <laughs> what is it? 24. 24. Damn. Oh my lord. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So with that, let me try and... <laughs> All the explosions has got Ember excited. She turns to Helga and says, song time. <laughs> okay. okay, I guess that means I'm making a performance check. <laughs> so upon the detonation of the second piece of dynamite, these two Sahagan just immediately get incinerated. <laughs> As well as two of the tentacles. <laughs> With that, though, you can tell that she is clearly uh, upset by this. And she's just like, ah, very well. I see you have no interest in talking this out. So Did be it. Did you figure that out? <laughs> <laughs> Roll initiative. I mean, Wolf gave her a chance to surrender. Good crap. <laughs> Nice. Uh, I'm trying to remember the initiative. How do you do that? <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, how do you do initiative? It's something. It's that plus two, ain't it? Whatever you roll, plus two. Well, if you pull up your little uh, character depends. sheet here, you just click on initiative right in the chord value there. Okay, let me do that then. That's what we've been doing. Because on the app, it. Oh, never mind. It does. That was me. I was stupid. Let me I see. have no idea. Shalar. Here should be a 20 plus okay. 2, I think. Wolf. I got a 21. Marvolo. Oh, damn, we all rode fucking high this time. Oh, I yeah. didn't. Oh, well. There we go. Okay. Uh, What were the rolls? 21 for Shalar. 21 uh, for Wolf. 22 for Marvolo. And 5 for Hilga. And these are some really play. good initiative rolls. Wait, King Bob, did you add your initiative bonus to it? To of that roll? I did. Uh, he knows what he's doing. He's a pro player. Uh, what play was Hilda's roll years, of man. five? That should probably be a seven because it didn't look like it added the plus two. Oh, did it not yeah. add it? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a seven for Hilga. All right. No, I'm not me. Go ahead and roll for the enemies. I'm not Ember. Oh, for Ember. My bad. Ember should be a seven. Okay. So it's a five for you, Hilga. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. For the first roll, it's going to be a 16 for Shalani. It's going to be 21 for the Baron. Oh, Honestly. he's still alive? Yes, the Baron is actually still alive. <laughs> and a 15 for the tentacles. All right. So first up, it's going to be you, Marvola, uh, Marvolo. Uh, so you see that it's still uh, this priestess along with the Baron and one other of the Kraken's tentacles still alive. Uh, what do you do? I raise my bow, aim at the priestess, and lose an arrow. So okay. Good. Uh, go ahead and give me a roll for that. 16. Uh, 16. Okay. That is actually going to hit. She does not have a very high armor class. All right. And I use my second level spell slot uh, for the bow ability to deal three. Uh, moment. Moment. Uh, um, uh, 4d8 additional damage. 4d8 additional damage. Yep. All right. Five plus... Oh my I Lord. hit her for 31 in total. So I'm, I'm just letting you guys know that you are trivializing this fight. <laughs> <laughs> because with that... Uh, you end up aiming your bow and um, immediately knocks Shalani to the side. Uh, she is not exactly dead, per se, but
but she is at death's door as it's clearly a mortal wound as the arrow just like stabs straight through her. Uh, basically, she's incapa incapacitated for the rest of this fight. Now it's only the Baron and the Tentacle that's left. Uh, are you doing anything else, Marvolo? Yes, are my ten uh, little sling guys still alive? Yes, they are very much mm -hmm. alive. I tell <laughs> all ten of them to attack the um, the Baron. Okay, I'm going to roll for them. Uh... Wait, I can do it? Oh yeah, you can go ahead and do it. I, I, I am really happy that Cockatoo didn't get to hear that heathen bitch say that Shalar isn't really a god. Um, what's the Baron's armor rating? Uh, the Baron's armor rating is... Let's see here. 16. Okay, the um, one... And two. the Kuotoa each get a plus three to each of their rolls. Oh, okay. Then five of them hit. That's okay. 5d4. Uh, yeah. The sling is 1d4. Right, 5d4 mm -hmm. plus... An extra 20 on top of that. Um, 12 what? and the extra 20. So 32. So what? with the hail of sling pellets, the Baron is quickly brought down as well. <laughs> oh, easy boss fight. Too easy. Oh my lord. <laughs> And with that, uh, that is pretty much the two main Sahagan left over. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there is still this one tentacle left anyway. Uh, are you doing anything else, Margolo? No, I'm done. <laughs> I did oh. enough. Okay. <laughs> no Baron left. Wolf, oh, it is up to you. All that's left is this one tentacle that is already pretty damaged anyway. You can hear kind of like the roaring and rumbling of what is very clearly a kraken deep underneath this pool. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's quite to the level of uh, like death rows, but it's pretty pissed off. How deep is that pool? Uh, you you can try and give me a perception check if you want. Uh, where's my thing? I'm hmm. going to count this as a bonus action if that's what you want to do. This what I want to do. I don't know. I have that. Um, I'm thinking about using my pocket sand. I want to see if will that do anything. That, <laughs> that's a giant. Thing. What if I just remember what that what is just... again? You can certainly <laughs> try. Pocket sand on a kraken. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna drain. Uh, that pocket. Nah, I think I would do that thing. So Wolf just looks at uh Ember. He goes. Give me one of those sticks of dynamite. And then tosses the stick of dynamite at the okay. other <laughs> thing. So I'm just letting you know ahead of time that if you toss if you toss dynamite, most likely the fuse is going to go out once it hits the water. He's he's tossing at the tentacle, not the, the tentacle. Water. Oh, uh, I see. I see. Patch to the right of it. It's just right there on the outside. Okay. I mean, the All other right. ones got damaged by the dynamite. Okay, go ahead and make me another ranged attack roll. Uh, I'm just oh, saying it right now. Attack? Explosives are literally saving your hides with this mm. final fight. <laughs> just roll a d20 and add your dex bonus. That would be a ranged attack. Bonus. All right, uh, what's my dex bonus? Yeah, it'd also be your proficiency on top of that. So an extra no, plus two. It shouldn't be because you're not proficient with this. Not true. That's why it's called improvised weapon. Five. Unfortunately, yeah. it you end up tossing it, but another rumble causes your aim to go a little wide. Uh, it ends up going over here instead and just <laughs> ineffective. <laughs> that's a, you that's wasted a one of my bombs. Oh. Sorry, Gosh, you killed my fire spirit. I guess we're even. <laughs> Are you doing anything else, Wolf? He transforms into a dire wolf. Okay. That's a bonus action. He's getting ready. You actually end up becoming quite a bit larger since you're being a dire wolf. 
Yeah, that's like the largest thing it could be right now. Most of the so time. you're more like that. Woo. And with that, it is Shalar's turn. So it's literally just this one tentacle left, and already it's looking pretty damaged. <clears throat> I just shoot it with a bow. <clears throat> okay, go ahead and give me an attack roll. Okay. Roll. 23 definitely hits. Nice. I gotta remember on this how to... <laughs> oh my Come lord! On. Well, that's oh, you, you got an army to send in too. You got like yeah. Guys. There's no point. way that's right because yeah, you should have a bonus too. On damage? Uh huh. Plus five. It should be your dex bonus. No, no, it? for the damage. Yeah, you I get don't... a dex bonus to your arrow. It's whatever your dexterity modifier is on top of what you rolled. Okay, so that'd be uh, four. Four. Okay. Four it's in total. Enough. Yeah, four in total. Okay. All right. So you end up just firing another arrow. It does sink into the tentacle, but it seems to be not do a whole lot anyway. It still rides kind of like in pain uh, as it's basically wanting to shift closer to where you are anyway. Okay. Uh, you doing anything I, else, Shalar? Yeah, I command all the fucking, uh, you know, 30. Uh, <laughs> or, or 29. Yeah, <laughs> technically 29. <laughs> to stab the fuck out of that tentacle. Okay. And with that, they all immediately end up coming over here anyway. Will you quit putting the fish guys in danger, damn it? We're trying yep, to see yep, them. Yep. I'm more in danger from Shellar. He's the only one that killed him so far. <laughs> which one is this? Which one is the other Kuotoa? I'm trying to remember. You're talking about the female one that we uh, rescued? The yeah, she's hanging out. I thought no, she was she's down at the bottom. Oh, it's like 29 Kuotoa with you already in this one room. No, there's 29 Ku Kuotoa that are under my command. Ten of them are with Nicola. Nicholas oh, saving the last ten the best he can. <laughs> yeah, my I ten are with me. And they stay with me. Oh, okay, I see. Alright, so uh, these these two right here pretty much end up swarming around this tentacle. Uh, you can go ahead and make me some rolls for this if you want. Or I can roll. Uh, you do the rolling, because I don't... Alright. I'm not rolling tons and tons of dice. Oh my god, oh my god. it's <laughs> I'm basically counting this like a swarm. There we go. All right. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Wait, a natural 20, that's double damage, isn't it? It's yeah, crit. it's double damage, or double the dice anyway. Yes, it depends. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. 2d6. That's what I'm rolling. Basically times... Yeah. Whew. Just that alone, actually. Because this is a swarm, see? This is like 10 attacking in unison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with that, like, quite quickly anyway, they end up stabbing this tentacle to where it goes limp. Pretty much with no <laughs> effort at all. And that's just one of them. Uh, by that point, uh, pretty much once all of that is done, all that's left is just kind of like this, uh, really kind of like loud, like the whole room is shaking just as the Kraken below is just like groaning in pain. All that's left is now Shalani, this priestess, as she's just kind of like breathing hoarsely. You just hear her go, it was all, why we had it. So well here. The Kuotoa, their god is a fake. They created Shalar. They themselves created him. Can oh, we're still in attack? Wait, we're still in attack? Uh, right now, she's basically just... This is like her dying words, but if you want to go ahead and finish her off, you can. Yeah, I want to cut her head off. <laughs> I'm ready for you. Final words. Well, I wanted to blow yeah. her up, damn it. 
Okay. I cut her head off, and then I raise it up to the uh, the Kuatoa and say, "Freedom!" <laughs> uh, right as she's uh, just like, "It's all a." Right as that happens, you just straight up ahead her, like pull up her head by her hair, uh, and you just end up presenting it to the rest of the Kuatoa. They're like, "We are free." And all of them just kind of like are jumping up and down, kind of like high fiving each other, uh, <laughs> just shouting the name of Shalar louder and louder. <laughs> we still haven't found the treasure. Poor Kokatoa. <laughs> yeah, with that. Oh, I'm trying to think what would happen here. This is this is a little <laughs> unexpected. <laughs> Did you not expect us to throw dynamite? <laughs> no, it's one other thing. They're like, but wait, if you are not Shilar, then what is that down there? My retarded cousin. <laughs> <laughs> they fed him something weird and like, for, you know. Uh, for any of you who are proficient with Arcana, I'll actually allow you to give me an Arcana roll to see if you know I what am. might be going on here. Yeah, I am proficient. I am. I think hmm. I might know what's going on here, not my character. I don't know anything. I don't know shit either. Hold on. I'm you just a giant wolf now. I can't reach. Air. <laughs> Let's just roll anyways. Fuck it. Okay. Damn. Yeah. After hmm. a few moments, the room does eventually go silent, as you can hear kind of like what is the Kraken just slowly slinking away. Yeah, that's a good thing because that was terrible. Wait, that's a D2. Yeah. <laughs> oh. That's actually a pretty good roll. That's a great roll. I thought you were rolling physical dice, Maji. I do roll physical dice. The cat's keeping me from typing it in. It's kind of funny as hell. <laughs> Go ahead and roll a d20, Maji. I'll let you. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to have a very pissed off cat. She would be uh, have proficiency in our kind of, wouldn't she? Yeah, yeah she yeah. does. You're our best hope, Maji. So don't they have like a three proficiency in it? Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> That's so awesome. <clears throat> uh, Even so, uh, you kind of... You're not entirely sure what Shalani, this priestess, ended up saying by... Uh, whenever she said that the Kuotoa actually ended up creating Shalar. But even so, it does make you wonder a little bit anyway. Uh, the unfortunate truth is none of you actually know why... Uh, the actual meaning of that word of of that phrase because everyone who could have given you that answer is now dead however oh. <laughs> the room is now silent uh the kraken shalar seems to have slinked away for the moment uh and you are surrounded by literal mountains of treasure thousands and thousands of gold pieces hallelujah <laughs> I tell my 10 to start looting and carry my gold out. I tell my 29 to do the same. <laughs> Matter of fact, I tell some of them to go build some carts if they can. I'm going to go All check right. on the old lady. For those of you who are trying to like dig into the gold, uh, go ahead and give me a contested roll. Then why why contest? There's enough for all of us. That is true. That's more than enough. Yeah, we're All not right. fighting, Albert. <laughs> yeah, we're splitting fair. We are crew. Okay, if you're splitting it evenly. Uh, let's see. Between each of you, let me check here really quickly. In total, you end up finding 6,000 copper pieces, 110,000 silver pieces, 34,000 gold pieces, and 900 platinum pieces. Okay, and we give 6,000 of the copper to the Kuotoa. Okay. As soon as you do, they're like, oh, we have our money back. Yes. And on top <laughs> of that, you end up getting 20 uh, rather expensive-looking art objects, as well as uh, several potions, actually. Uh, 
There's, yeah, a bunch of arcane potions as well as a quiver of very fine arrows. Oh, Marvolo takes a look at that. Yeah, and the it is a quiver of uh, what seemed to be uh, metagaming here, plus one arrows, though Marvolo himself doesn't know that. He just knows they're of a very fine make. Uh, yep, I'll take it. And uh, the potions the are of growth, animal friendship, and fire breath. <laughs> What's the name of the, the female Koatoa, the shopkeeper? Uh, Shalice. Yeah. We go up to Shalice and see if we can uh, borrow her ship at her camp. All right. You just come up to Shalice and she's like, What of Klako, though? What happened to him? <laughs> he died as you lived. A true hero. He he died as a sacrifice to the great Shalice. Shut the fuck up, Amber. No, he didn't. <laughs> You can see that she just starts, she begins weeping right in front of you, and she's like, yes, yes, his sacrifice was ne necessary. I wish it could have ended, it could have turned out better. Very well. You're free, da people. You're Mavolo, free Mavolo puts his hand on her shoulder and tells her, remember his sacrifice. His spirit will protect your island. Remember his name. Remember him. Yes, Cockatoo the Great. <laughs> he shall always be remembered. Clacko as his real name, but Cockatoo as the hero. <laughs> that sounds beautiful. Will he be joining with you, Shirar, when you return to the heavens? Yes, he'll have an honored place in my hall. <laughs> Thank you. It is all a meek little quarter like me could ask for. We will make sure he's mounted on the wall with pride. <laughs> I will do I will do my best to honor him in the meantime. Do so, and you will be rewarded when your time comes. Oh, Same that time. Is all right, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> But first, we must feast, all of us. And right as she says that, all of the Kuatoa just go, Feast? Feast? We must have feast, yes, to celebrate this battle, to honor the memory of Klako. We must feast. All of them just start shouting in unison. Do we have any food around? <laughs> we could feed not them food. the dead lizard No, people. we're not feeding them the dead corpses that are poisoned. Uh, sushi. <laughs> mm, dead yes, lizard. Seared uh, Kraken. Oh yeah, there's tentacles laying everywhere. Sushi. Calamari. Oh, I also yeah, saw yeah. some barrels of supplies. Yeah, that you moved out of the way. Yeah. Alright, let's go feast. Alright. And with that, uh, in the meantime, just kind of like as you're all going back to Shell Harbor, Shalice very easily agrees uh, to kind of like lend you the uh, the ship that was moored by Captain Bolas. As really, since they're no longer enslaved by the Zahagan, they have no further use of it. Uh, Wait, we never found out what ha who Captain Bolas was. <laughs> Pretty much all you know of Captain Bolas is he's the person who first discovered the island and who actually drew out the map. Okay. Uh, oh, was but... he the dead dude in the caves? With the armor? I will not say. <laughs> uh, the but yeah, uh, the, the feast you have is very loud, very boisterous. Uh, there's quite a bit of uh, drunkenness involved. Uh, and afterwards, following a few days of rest... Uh, you finally make your journey thousands of gold pieces richer. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll say even even the great uh, Kraken of Shalar, uh, being sorely wounded from the dynamite you had inflicted on it, even he stays clear as you, as you deftly make your escape from Kraken Isle. Otherwise, <laughs> it could have ended very badly. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that is where we are going to end this session. <laughs> Poor cockatoo. Poor yeah. cockatoo. He's, yeah, mounted, a... he's forever mounted on the wall of Shalar. So mind. even though your characters never knew this, I, I... I will go ahead and tell you anyway what yeah. the reason was behind the Kraken. Wait, I have a theory. Okay. They uh, worshipped it into existence. Yes. Ha! Their, oh, their belief in it was so strong that it actually manifested. <clears throat> now, is Kakatu spirit um, the guardian of the island? Are they going to worship him into existence? Ooh. I told them to remember his name, to remember him. That is a good question, actually. That was the idea behind those words. Except he's now Kakatu. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Kaka, whatever the fuck I call him. <laughs> so what... So this is outside of character. Your characters did not actually figure this out as part of the adventure. Mm -hmm. But uh, Shilani, the the priestess, she was actually keeping the Kuotoa under submission uh, to believe that she was the personal right-hand person of Shilar because they worshipped him out of fear. And she only reinforced that. So they pretty much had to yield everything they had to her. And in turn, it would also safeguard the island. Yeah. Well, now they're 6,000 copper these. pieces richer. They are 6,000 copper pieces richer, which equates to about 60 gold. <laughs> <laughs> but for them, it's a sizable sum. They don't need tons of gold and platinum and stuff. No, no they're, they're humble. Fish. I just wanted to give them something so at least they can buy crops or whatever the fuck to help build back. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm going to say right now, you all trivialize that final fight with that dynamite. I did not <laughs> truly see that coming. I was this like, yeah, it's going to do some damage, maybe down one or two. No, it downed like most of them. I was like, oh. And we still had one unused. Yep. yep, we had one left. And that's that's what ends up uh, coming to mind as you're all exiting, is uh, there's still one stick of dynamite left. <laughs> and we really never like used so. my cannon. Is there anything you would like to do, Maji, in the meantime? Any bit of tinkering that goes horribly wrong? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no, with my luck, we'll full time you freak it up and leave me in the cabin until we get <laughs> back. <laughs> oh, God, guys, we forgot uh, Captain Sovizo and nope. um, Arthur's. We didn't forget them. We sent people and uh, wait, come wait. get us. At you the... eventually ended up reconvening with them before leaving. What about yeah. Helga's theme song for us while we're fighting in battle? Didn't even get a chance. Didn't even get to him. <laughs> yeah, never got to battle too fast. <laughs> oh man, I feel bad. Sorry, Bob. It worked out. No. To problem. be fair, though, you all were playing really smartly. It could have ended so much worse for you all. I mean, did you not expect us to throw dynamite at this thing when Maji made dynamite? I expected you all to throw dynamite, but at the same time, I was expecting a bigger fight there. But the thing is, with the poison, that thinned out a lot of them right there. <laughs> yep. And we had 40 fucking, or 39. Uh, <laughs> that too. This dude's to attack. Yeah. Yep. It, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, if you decided to attack the Chul... Uh, that's what those lobster things were in the cave. Yeah, probably at least ten or ten to fifteen of ten to fifteen of the Kuotoa would have just died right there. Yeah, I did go at them because I was like, this yeah. is kind of fucking pointless. Yeah, they were they were pretty strong too. Um, well, there's usually a oh, what was. Hmm. I know the rule when in RPGs usually uh. There's either a small number of strong enemies or large number of weak enemies. And if yep. you just see two little enemies like that right there, that means they're probably strong. If you see a massive yes. right here, they're probably weak, but I don't want to deal with that number. I wonder what the rest of her speech was going to be if I didn't fucking just launch <laughs> dynamite at her. So what she was, uh, so what she was actually going to try and do, she was going to try and make the Kuotoa have a crisis of faith. Yeah, that's why I threw it the second time. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also thank God I remembered that I bought that fucking uh, ring because if not, uh, yeah. just to let you everyone know, we would have all been fucking blown been blown up. 
No, yeah, that that saved our asses. That was great. It went perfectly. Hey, if I just bought it too, because I was like, well, I can't have any paralysis or strain or, or, or uh, strain or whatever the hell it is called. So okay. now I've answered to myself the question of how just a group of like five or six adventurers ends up waging war with what, like two or three dozen Sahagan in general, along with an entire war uh, orc camp. Just bring tons of explosives. <laughs> just bring an artificer with a freaking pyromania. <laughs> Man, I am kind of sad that cockatoo died. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, oh, I, good story. the only reason why he died was he was just within the blast range, and I was like, "They're like they're all like, several of them are immediately dead." I look at Clacko's hit points, and I'm like, "Oh, he's not gonna survive this." <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost somebody, Trippy. Oh, let me. I uh, guess I guess it's time to wrap up. Yeah, I guess it is time to wrap up. Well, uh, for all of you out there who joined us for the stream, uh, we'd like to thank you a lot. Uh, as for uh, as for now, I guess we'll all go ahead and wrap this up and uh, bid you adieu. So, uh, I would like to say uh, thanks for uh, thanks for watching, and uh, uh, see you next time. Kapla, Kaplui. Goodbye. <laughs> Boom. Cheers.